Hi everyone welcome back to another Reddit cheating story. Before we start please hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you love to watch more cheating stories. People who have been on both sides, cheater and betrayed, what's your story? How do you see infidelity today? I'll go first. I didn't have one big story with one big affair, it's a series of situations. I'll try to be brief, but I don't want to leave information out, especially since the facts of my story put me more at fault than other people, or at least just as much. This story might be long. I'll mark the place where my opinion is. For those who want to skip to it. I am of course changing names, but keeping the same initial, to avoid confusion. It all starts when I was 21. There was a massive national congress for law students in a city that is internationally famous for its parties in a country that is already famous for its parties. The city was in a very central location, so people from all over went there. I'm from the northeast and got alone very well with a crowd from the south whose lodgings were right next to ours. I ended up getting involved with a girl from that group. The congress was in July. We stayed in touch after that. Because of the insurmountable distance, 3000 km, we never actually had openly spoke about a relationship, but our contact was beyond flirty. As luck would have it, I scored a free airplane ticket to go see her some two months after the Congress. Everything was set, but, one week before my flight, her attitude changed dramatically from super cute kawaii to simply polite. When I got there, September, she was weirdly cold. What actually happened was that she met a guy and decided to choose the guy who lived in the vicinity over the weirdo from very far away. I don't blame her for the choice, but she could have told me. Her friends saved me. They took care of me, showed me around town, took me to parties, but it was rough, especially since I was staying at her place. After a week we got into a bit of a fight and she told me we were just friends, that I had imagined everything. I mentioned that to her best friend, Candy, who blurted out what a load of crap. She was fantasizing about marrying you, moving to your city and us visiting. I didn't know, but Candy was incapable of keeping her mouth shut. Every single one of her friends took my side in this, by the way. Finally, one of them also helped me meet a new girl at a pub, just before I left, and that's how I met Mandy. There was no sex, we just made heavily at the pub. I stayed in touch with Mandy for months. I also got the contact of a bunch of those people, because they were awesome. Next Congress would be in their city, so I knew I'd meet them again. However, I met Rhonda and we started dating. I messaged Mandy within minutes to let her know. Her response was a joke to just make sure I were single when I came over. I said it wasn't funny, but that was it. July comes and I get there a week or two before the Congress, not clear, long time ago, so I could hang out with my friends. I stayed with my friend Matthew. The whole time, Mandy was constantly following us around, partying with us, taking me out to meet her friends and stuff. Some funny stories, but they would make this post even longer. It was kinda noticing that Mandy was a hunter, and that I was her prey, but I thought that my high moral standards would protect me, famous last words. If anyone is wondering, I did run into Tammy once. At the Congress, I saw Candy for the first time after being back and ran towards her squeezing and hugged in an overenthusiastic way, I'm a very hyper person. From the hug, I saw Tammy. My mood turned to ice, I said a polite hi, and that was it. Later, I was at a pub with Candy, her boyfriend Sam, and Mandy. Mandy had excused herself and Candy started pushing me to hook up with Mandy. I hadn't had sex with Rhonda yet, it wasn't serious, and Mandy was a great girl. Sam had cheated on her once, this woman really couldn't control her mouth. Duh. All of these things weakened my defenses and eventually I made out with Mandy, but we didn't go all the way. That night, I felt like dying, like I was the worst human being on earth. Talked to a few people, and eventually my pastor told me that this wasn't yet a marriage, and that, if it didn't mean anything, I should simply shut up and not tell Rhonda, because it would only hurt her. My punishment would be having to deal with my own guilt without burdening her. That's what I did. She even tried prodding me with some not-so-disguised attempts of getting him uncomfortable, but I never hesitated in denying even the idea of having cheated on her. I didn't cheat on her for the remainder of our relationship, but something had changed in me. Years later, I was in another relationship, let's call her Andrea. I am from Continent 1, she's from Continent 2, and we met in Continent 3. I met her six weeks before returning, but we decided to try it. She came to visit me three months later and I finally moved to be with her after four to five months. 
there is something very special about being in love and living in one of the most, if not the most, romantic cities in the world. However, the seeds of disaster were planted without us realizing it. It happened because we were both a bit immature at the time. Sex between us was fantastic, but I wasn't very tactful about initiating it, since I had never experienced spending so much time with my so. She didn't like it, but was too brutal in rejecting me, which, over time, left me completely emasculated, feeling like less of a man. Sex was still good, but I had to put a lot of more effort into it than her most of the time. I couldn't find a job in Continent 2, so I ended up moving back to Continent 3. She would come for work every 3-4 to four months for work. It would be initially amazing, but our problems would resurface after a few days. We stayed like this for a little over a year until she was able to move to Continent 3. Unlike what people might be thinking, I did not cheat on her during this period, though there were plenty of opportunities. I still remember four of them quite vividly. But, yeah. She moved in and we started our matrimonial life together. There was no formal marriage, but we were like a married couple in almost every sense. Our problems in bed continued. What I didn't know was that I was the only one frustrated. My efforts kept her satisfied, but I was too passive and didn't assert myself, so she had no idea I was feeling emasculated. Then came the marriage of a close friend of hers and I was invited, so we went back to her homeland for it, but I returned a couple of days earlier. I went out for yakitori with my friend Norman, a Texan with both Irish and Russian families whose alcohol tolerance honors his forefathers. From the Yakitori restaurant we went to drink with a friend of his in a high-end bar and we finished the night at Chocolate, the most insane place you've ever hear of. By that point I was beyond drunk, my friend and his friend had disappeared, and I was dancing with a German and a French girl who both wanted to hook up with me. I resisted for long enough for the German girl to pass out drunk, but I went back to the French girl's place. The following morning, all the guilt and pain I had experienced six years before came back, and I resolved to take the same course of action. First, make sure I'd never see the French girl again. Basically, I called her from a burner phone. Second, deal with my own guilt without burdening Andrea. When she retuned, we had the best sex we'd had had in months. She asked what had happened to me, but I dodged her question. The reality was that I had my self-esteem and masculinity restored by illicit means. Months passed without any more infidelity on my part, but our problems came back, my frustrations grew, and I didn't know how to bring it up with her. Eventually, things got so bad that I started talking to some friends about it. Not too many, maybe two or four. One of them was this gorgeous former model from the Netherlands. Thought I she would never go for me because she was so beautiful, but she tried to kiss me when we were saying goodbye. This messed up with my head. We talked a little more, and she gave me head in the cab. Throughout that week we were dancing around one another, trying to be friends and fighting the temptation at the same time. Luckily, She met some guy at some party she went to and I was safe once again. However, this time I didn't feel any guilt, so I knew something was wrong with me. I finally managed to communicate with her and our sex life finally started to improve. A few weeks later, we went to Fred's birthday. Fred was a co-worker of hers I was pretty friendly with. I was dead tired, apologized, and went home earlier. However, I woke up at 6 in the morning and she was not home. I texted her and she told me she was at Henry's place. Henry was her friend from college who did not know Fred and was not at the party. It was interesting that I felt the same pain I had felt years before with Tammy. She arrived home around 10 a.m. with an expression that said I know I fucked up. I hugged her trying to see if I could smell sex. I didn't, but I'm not sure I would have noticed. She asked me if there was someone else. I mentioned the Dutch model and she started crying, saying how heartbroken she was. I deflected telling her what actually happened saying that we never even kissed, true. Then she told me her story with Henry, which was a story people here have heard so many times before. She was a bit frustrated with some issues I had, so she started talking a lot to him and they developed an emotional affair, that was inevitably going to become physical. Then as things became very messy among us, she continued going out with him. One night I went to get her at a bar to bring her home. She agreed to seek help from my pastor and we talked with him. He said that we were both awesome people, but not a good match at that moment. In the end, we realized that we still loved one another very much, but love was not enough. He asked us to respect one another while we still lived under the same roof. We had a fairy tale weekend together where everything seemed perfect up until Monday morning, but, after we got back from work, there was an invisible wall between us. 
she left a few days later. When she came back after two weeks, she commented with our landlady that she had a new boyfriend, limitations with the local language can be a bitch. The landlady told me. It hurt, but I wasn't surprised. Their relationship lasted around a month. Lucky for me, I took a two-week break to meditate, pray, and heal. When I got back, she kept trying to find excuses to reach out to me, but I was strong enough not to fall back into that relationship. We remained on great terms. Not friendly, but, last time I spoke to her on the phone I could still feel true love in both our voices. Alas, love is not enough. She is back in her home country, and so am I. When we first met, she was forthcoming that she had had affairs with committed men twice, but didn't think it was her problem because she was single. I disagreed. I still hold her in high regard. After this, there was another very messy story where a friend's brother stole my girlfriend. I won't really get into this one because it was a mess. Suffice to say that nobody there acted nicely, everybody was an asshole and that this breakup affected other people because we had a a small friend group. It was the most painful experience of my life. So, for my opinions about cheating. Cheating is never justified. Cheating is more about the feelings of the people involved than about formalities. Also, it's not cheating if the relationship is dead. Cheating is the couple's business and people from outside can't judge if they decide to split up or stay together. There are two kinds of cheating, isolated case, when a person wasn't planning to cheat but an opportunity presents itself, and continued cheating. If it's an isolated case, shut up and don't tell the so. Your guilty conscience should be your penance for the rest of your life. If it's an affair or a bunch of ONS, why are you even in the relationship anyway? Breakup. I only get involved if I'm 100% sure that the betrayed will believe me and that they will break up. Cheating is less a moral failure and more weakness of character or resolve. Cheating can range from an atomic bomb to something very annoying. Just because a person cheated with one partner, doesn't mean they will cheat with the next one. Nobody is immune to cheating and we should always be careful. Here are some of the best comments from our community. Very interesting story and some great insight. Lessons learnt clearly and hope you've taken everything on board for your future relationships. I can relate to many points. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell.